Tasmanian plumbers are being told not to connect drinking water tanks that aren't certified. It follows the discovery that some incorrectly produced tanks have caused lead poisoning in people. There's confusion about who's responsible for ensuring water tanks meet national standards, and even if there is a proper standard. Fiona Breen reports that nobody is taking responsibility for checking Tasmania's drinking water tanks are safe. The delivery of a drinking water tank to a property in the Huon Valley is another step in an ongoing nightmare for this family. By chance they've found out the stainless steel tanks they were using for drinking water were poisoning them. So how did you find out? Just had the water tested? Um, well, we found out through the newspaper that we needed to have the water tested and then, yeah, as soon as we saw that public health alert, we got it tested in a Hobart lab yep. and they came back much higher than the daily allowance, but not as high as some of the other readings have come back. They'd bought the stainless steel tanks from Kingston Sheet Metal two and a half years ago, thinking they were the most eco-friendly option. The tanks were put together with a lead-based solder, which leached into the drinking water, making it toxic. It was unbelievable, yeah. It was just, I mean, considering the research that we had put into wanting to find the best type of water tank and stainless steel was it, to hear that that was, you know, potentially poisoning our whole family for two and a half years was not the news that you want to get. Occupational toxicologist and leading expert on lead levels, Professor Chris Winder is incredulous. I see it as a stupid mistake, not a simple mistake. Um, I don't know how this happened. It's, uh, you don't want to have water containing more than the uh, standard in Australia of 10 micrograms per litre and anything that raises that is something that needs to be looked at. Kristen Waugh owns two of more than 120 contaminated drinking water tanks sold in the last three years. There are still 13 customers with 18 tanks between them that haven't been found. There could be more unaccounted for because the health department admits the list obtained from the manufacturer is not accurate. We can't be 100% sure. We're currently endeavouring to go back to the uh, business operator to see if we can't extract even more information now. Is that business owner still cooperating? Well, we're about to find out. Tests have been done on the water in tanks that have been tracked down. We've got quite a number of uh, samples now taken and the average lead concentration in the tanks that have been affected by this is around about 300 micrograms per litre, which is about 30 times the drinking water guideline. The most extreme case was 1,370 micrograms per litre, which was very high. Eleven people drinking water from the tanks have had their blood lead levels checked. So in terms of the Australian blood lead level standard, um, my daughter and I were both over the limit and my husband was just under. Those levels in those people range from 11 up to 26 micrograms per deciliter. Professor Chris Winder says there are no safe levels of lead in the blood, particularly in children. The main effects are in developing children uh, and effects seem to occur throughout childhood and they include things like poor performance at school, lower IQ, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, uh, problems with delinquency and things like that. Professor Winder is pushing for the National Health and Medical Research Council to reduce the acceptable lead level thresholds. Evidence is uh, coming from overseas uh, showing that there are levels that may be five and maybe two on children's health and uh, perhaps, as I said, the Germans and the Americans and the Canadians are now considering it, have revised that level from ten down to five and um, Australia should probably follow. It's not just families that have been caught up in the nightmare. The new Sustainable Learning Centre at Mount Nelson bought the tanks 
for its six-star green energy rated building, which opened in November. The tanks were to be used for drinking water. It's unclear how much water was used. Like many others, Kristen Waugh is asking questions. Where are the regulatory bodies around the making, manufacturing and distribution of water tanks? Um, water tanks are not a new thing in Australia. Lots of people use them for their water, so how could this have actually occurred? Well, it seems there is confusion about who is responsible for ensuring tanks are safe. Workplace Standards sent a letter to plumbers this week. It told them materials intended for use in drinking water must comply with Australian standards and be certified under the Watermark Certification Scheme. They were told cold water tanks used in drinking water supplies are exempt from certification, but the solder used is not. However, the letter says the watermark certification process for plumbing materials protects the safety and health of people and prevents the likelihood of environmental harm. Ultimately, responsibility for this rests with the plumber. The plumber is a licensed contractor and uh, he knows, or he, he or she knows, the need to ensure that they use plumbing products that are approved under the plumbing code. And with tank manufacture, you need to be satisfied that the joining material used complies with the plumbing code. And there's adequate information out there for them to do their own research on that. Plumbers say watermarks are required on drinking water tanks under the plumbers code. But workplace standards fails to ensure compliance. So you're saying that plumbers actually don't look for this Australian standard because it's not something that's adhered to? They look for it in the, for the most part on plumbing products, but there is a need to reinforce the, the concept that water tanks for drinking purposes are subject to the same rigour as any other plumbing product. And plumbers are well versed in the watermark but not in the case of water tanks because there are simply very few, if any, water tanks with a watermark on them. Under the National Building Regulations, it suggests that there should be a watermark and uh, something saying clearly on the tanks, used for drinking water, and that's under the National Building Regulations. Yeah, that's, I think that's a recommendation, but if you mandate the watermark, the problem with that is you're going to push the price up, and that's the question, so it's a balance. Do you push the price up uh, and therefore have an ultimately um, safe product, knowing it's 100% safe, when, when from what we understand and see so far, the, the problem is, is isolated the one manufacturer. But there's definitely no body or no person checking the manufacturer of drinking water tanks. No, nobody checking the manufacturer with drinking water tanks. No, we leave that to the manufacturer to ensure that, 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 that we expect they would ensure that the code is complied with when making these tanks. In the meantime, the Master Plumbers Association is urging plumbers to refuse to connect drinking water tanks that don't have watermarks. That could be a problem because there is a question mark over whether any tanks manufactured in Tasmania carry watermarks. Some of our major manufacturers in Australia sell uh, polyethylene tanks that are not marked but they will tell you at their marketing point that they're suitable for drinking water and they're simply not they do not carry watermarks or carry the standards australia marks or other marks that are required under this australian standard Yucky. meanwhile kristen war and her young family will have to live with the uncertainty. There's no way of knowing what the impact of lead will be, particularly on my daughter, and we'll be waiting upwards of 10 to 20 years to find out what those impacts might be.